All right, good morning, helpers. Um, this is part of the Helping the Helpers Conference. And since there's so much to cover, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some extra lectures, and you can watch them um, as you see fit. And this one is on removing systems. I often find people that are um, wanting to remove systems, and and many people, they take and they, they look at the uh, book written by Fritz and Springmeier, which were a husband and wife couple that came out of a three-letter organization. But what they don't realize is they were programmed, which is why they were allowed to do this. It's called Gemetra. It's where you mix, you mix fiction with fact. And the reason why they allowed that book, actually not only allowed it, they wanted it to be written, is because it would keep counselors busy for the rest of their life, never being able to fix somebody, but actually screwing them up worse. <clears throat> you do not need to know all about the systems. I mean, you don't need to know that when Dorothy goes through the field of flowers, she goes to sleep, goes into a fuge state. Um, because what they don't tell you in the book is if Dorothy does go into a fuge state, it's because they've split other things out of Dorothy. You don't need to know the intricacies of Alice in Wonderland, the Lost Boys, the Seven Dwarfs, Miss Muffet. Miss Muffet's very dangerous. That's spider programming. That's assassin programming. My friend, you don't need to know the details of these systems. First of all, the person should be fixed as quickly as possible. With God, it is possible. You see, it takes time to put everything in, but you pull one thread and the whole thing comes apart like a tapestry. So you can unroll and take out an entire system in just a matter of hours. And this is how you do it. <clears throat> when I begin with anyone, what I do is I ask them if they've had any dreams. So that's where I start. The reason is, is because once you go into the valley and start removing altars, and you always want to remove the bad altars first, not the good ones. Otherwise, the person will become totally evil. Okay? So you find out if they've had any dreams. Um, <clears throat> I had a person recently tell me, yeah, I dreamed I was on a pirate ship. Captain Hook was there, you know, and um, Johnny Depp, Jack Sparrow was on there. See, in the dream, there will always be some of the fiction, like from a movie, mixed in with the fact of what's in the mind. Well, she also had a limerick in her head, twinkle, twinkle, little star. That's a triggering phrase that causes a person when they're young, um, what they'll do is they will go over it. For instance, the first series of programs they'll put in a baby is to teach it to diffuse, is they will teach the child rock a baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. And what they do is they begin disassociating the mind while they sing that. And so the mind will hear that. It goes past, by the way, songs go right past the filtering systems. They're not stopped at the third layer of the anterior layer of the conscience. You have the conscience, subconscious, anterior layer, the third layer of the subconscious, then the value and belief systems, then the fight or flight and coping mechanisms, survival mechanisms. Then you have the oasis just above the brainstem. And then you have the no conscious. So they will use a, a song or a limerick because it goes right beyond any filtering systems and becomes part of the memory attached to whatever's happening. So that's why they will always use trigger phrases, hand movements, or gestures, and eyes. With the rock by baby, they will rock the baby. But what most people don't understand is, is they will put the infant, the father will, for sexual training, and he'll rub the child's genitals against his. And um, he will sexually stimulate the child while he's singing or the mother is singing that phrase. Okay. So they start that in infancy. They train the mind to disassociate. So what I do is I ask, I, I immediately knew that that was lost boy programming. Um, I will go into the types of programming if we have time in this one. If not, I'll do a separate lecture. So I asked the Lord, to take that person right to where that was. Sure enough, Peter Pan's Island was there. It was located on a star. 
So here's what you do. It doesn't matter if it's Lost Boys, if it's the Seven Dwarfs, or whatever. You simply ask the Lord to take the person there. But you pray and ask the Lord to wrap them with the Holy Spirit, to go before them, not let anything leave, nor anything hide, but to reveal all things with the Spirit of Truth. You then take them, have the Lord take them right down to the system. It could be the land of Egypt where Pharaoh sits on a throne. It could be Beauty and the Beast where it's just a beast, the beast, with the beauty. But all the furniture, and that's a three-lettered organization programming, all the furniture are alternate personalities, even the light switches and such. Okay? Even the books will be part of that programming. So you have the Lord take them to the system. And then very simply, you ask the Lord to search through everything there to find every alternate personality and to bring it up so they can see it all right there in the system. If it's Wonderland, you have them all brought up into Wonderland. Every alternate personality to include those that are animals, artifacts, or items. Because they may say, well, I just see gems. Or I just see a, a table and chairs. I say, how many chairs? Seven. Now here's the next thing. You have him bring all the alternate personalities up there. And then you ask the Lord to give them back their human form. You ask him to give them back their human form. And then to separate all unholy or demonic entities from them all other human essence that's not theirs from them. Because they will always have a controller, owner, and programmer, and a handler. They will always have those four. And they will have their human essence in them, which gives them a physical soul tie to control them. And they do this by having them ingest their DNA and swapping blood. Okay? The life is in the blood. So you ask the Lord to give them back their human form, to take away everything demonic, to remove all essence, DNA, and RNA that is not theirs, and then to give them back their right mind, to turn them back and give them back a human mind. Because animal alters will believe they are animals. They'll be going around grunting and like a pig or way neighing like a horse. The ones that think they're items, those are called synthetic alters. They won't even know they're human. To give them back a human mind and let them see themselves. Have them put a mirror in there and let them see themselves. And then have them take the mirror away. Never break a mirror. We'll discuss mirrors at another time. Okay? So you go to the system, and there is a system of mirrors. And it's where there's an octagon. It could be 12 mirrors. It could be seven, it could be five, whatever the number is. You ask the Lord to freeze everything if you do a mirror a program, not let anything escape, and not let anything be triggered or set off. Ask him to, to take all fuses away, to take all alarms and deactivate them, to destroy all switches, and not let anything react or be triggered. Then you ask him to come with holy fire and melt the mirrors, turn them into dust, and remove the dust. Then to reveal the alternate personalities behind the mirrors. And here's the deal. This is why you don't want to mess with that until you've taken out the other systems. But I'm going to tell you because you need to know this. You, you deal with the mirrored room last because behind the mirror you'll have Dorothy, Alice, Tinkerbell, Sleepy. You're going to have all these different characters. You're going to have one that looks just like the person except very professional. You'll have a one that you'll have several that look like the person, but they'll be programmed parts. So behind the mirrors are literally the head, 
alternate personality that goes down to that system. Okay. That's why you deal with it last, because once you remove a system, there's nothing behind that mirror. It'll be empty. So the idea is to get rid of everything so there's no reaction. Because here's what happens. If you break the mirrors, it sets off a fuse. It's, it's an epsilon phi program, the fuse is, which will cause them to become psychotic. Because all the thoughts of whatever that personality is, and every one of the sometimes hundreds of personalities switch split out of it, will begin mixing together, creating a mind-boggling state. The person will become paranoid. The one in the middle, who's the true person, surrounded, will become paranoid. They'll become delusional. They'll begin getting schizophrenic. All the witchcraft and sorcery and Satanism that's happened to those alternate personalities and their demons will begin afflicting that person. All the trauma that... Say, for instance, Pinocchio programming is where they electrocute, they do shock therapy on the, the person. So they teach them how to dance in the hands of the puppet master. You know, he's he's one that controls the strings. And by the way, never cut those strings till you've dealt with Pinocchio. I'll get into that at another time. But you don't have to deal with any of that crap when you do it right. But you see, that's what sets off a suicide program. It takes about two years for it to run its course. The person will go crazy. They'll alienate themselves from everybody around them because people will say they're just nuts. You know, we love her. She's our daughter or she's our cousin or our sister. But, you know, she's in the Lord's hand. She needs to be institutionalized. She needs to be medicated. And they'll shoot them up with Thorazine or some other cyclopane or this mind-altering, numbing drug. Haldane, they'll drug them. Then they'll institutionalize, and then the person will find a way to kill themselves and get rid of themselves. Because you know why they put the fuses on them? Because if you lose your systems, you're no longer of any value to your owners, handlers. Handlers, by the way, will be punished for you getting set free. Controllers will punish the handlers. But the handler is the one that's going to take the brunt of it. And it's usually a sibling or a spouse that is the handler. Okay. The owners will communicate, not always, they don't always, they rarely punish the, the controllers because they'll just say, you know what? You better get better track of your handlers and you better choose them more wisely. So that's why it sets off the kill switch or the suicide programming, the epsilon phi. Because once those things are damaged, they're no good anymore. They won't follow you around with helicopters. They won't be monitoring you. They don't have to. You destroy yourself. Okay. So you ask the Lord. You take the person to the system. You ask the Lord to find every alternate personality there. You ask the Lord to take and turn them all into humans. To separate all demonic influence and essence, RNA and DNA that is not theirs from them. To then give them their right mind. You then ask the Lord to cut all hermetic seals holding them at that age. And to make them the same age as the person you're dealing with. The person's 42, make them all 42. Say, Lord, make them the same age as Jane Doe here. Then ask him to blow the breath of life over them and ask him to attach them to that person's heart, soul, spirit, will, intellect, emotions, and ability for reasoning. Because they will have been severed from that. That's what the detachment disorder does. So they're not able to pray with the heart, with the will, with the emotions. So you ask him to reattach them to those parts. Um, in this book, uh, I wrote Dissociative Identity Disorder, Multiple Identity Disorder, Mind Control Programming. I describe what the eight and nine parts of the person are. 
ask him to attach them. And then ask the Lord to ask them if they would like to be set free and receive him as their personal Lord and Savior. All of them will except one. And that's the God part. So lead them all in a mass prayer. Asking him to forgive them of their sins. Have them forgive those that have hurt them. It's very important because if you don't forgive somebody that has hurt you, then God cannot forgive you but must release you over to be demonized. So you ask them, have them pray to, re to forgive everyone that's hurt them. In the prayer, have them renounce all the sins of the ancestors and those that sinned against them, including their own sins. Have In the prayer, ask him to remove all curses, unholy ties, and attachments. And ask him to not only forgive them, but have them tell him that they believe he died for their sins and rose from the grave, and to come into their heart to attach them and be their personal Lord and Savior. Have him remove all their old clothes and put the righteousness of Jesus upon them. Next, ask the Lord if they all prayed it. And if any didn't pray it, to separate them. They will usually have yellow, orange, or white eyes. Okay? Yellow means it's the Nephilim. White eyes means it's Lucifer or Baal. Orange means it's Lucifer and the Nephilim mixed together. If that happens, it means it's two personalities put together into one. So ask the Lord to separate the personalities if it's two and to take the unholy spirits out of them. Because that part will believe it's a God because at the age of five it will have been led up what they call the stairway to heaven to, work, to wed Lucifer. If it's the orange or yellow dyed, it will have been born with the Nephilim, but they wed them. This is Sleeping Beauty programming. They wed that one in the woods to Lucifer, and she just sleeps until the end of the time. That's why you can't find her unless you look for her. Okay? So what you do is then ask the Lord to take out of that one all unholy spirits and to give them a desire to pray to, to be saved. If that part will not, Ask the Lord to find everything they're attached to. Then ask the Lord, is there a throne here in that system? Person, There is always going to be a throne. Then have the Lord shine the light of the Holy Spirit on it and reveal it. Next, ask the Lord, is there anything under the throne? Don't be suggestive. Let them tell you. There's always something hidden under the seat, cushion, or under the throne itself. There's always gems there. There will always usually be a crown, a scepter, and a box. Have the Lord crush the gems and release the essence. There will always be essence and of a living sacrifice, but the human's essence, it's called hermetic magic, where they store it in a gem. Have them their essence released. Ask the Lord to bring any other personalities attached to whoever sits on that throne and ask the Lord to make whoever sits on that throne appear. You will see the demonic entity because there's a different one over each system. It could be Molech, could be Ashtaroth, could be Diana, could be uh, Mammon, could be Leviathan, could be the devil, could be the snake. But ask the Lord to reveal who it is and to bring all the other ranking demons into the room, into that place, because you will find there is always the unholy trinity. Then ask the Lord to find, and if the person's name is Jane Doe Smith, say, Lord, would you find the personalities attached to these unholy spirits? Find all the Janes, all the Does, and all the Jane Does, because they split the mind into three pieces, one for each of the unholy spirits. Have the Lord then, when those spirits, those alternate personalities, those three are brought in, or however many you have, 
have him remove the demons from them. All the essence, DNA and RNA that is not theirs from them. To give them their right minds. To bring peace upon them and attach them to the heart, the soul, the spirit, the will, the intellect, the emotions, the ability for reason. They're already attached to the flesh. Don't have to worry about that one. And then have the Lord blow the breath of life over him like he did in the Valley of Dry Bones and ask them to pray to receive him. Once they do that, ask the Lord. Is there any infants associated with this throne and these three? doesn't matter what system you're in. There will always be the original dedicated infant, usually three, one for each of the unholy trinity, because they all, they don't share. <laughs> Demons don't share. They want their own. Have them bring the infant up. And ask him to take the mind of the beast from the infant, the mind of Lucifer from the infant, the demonic mind from the infant. Ask him to break the seals on the infant. Reverse the authority given by the parents and the ancestors for the infant to be dedicated unto Molech, Satan, Lucifer, which all the unholy entities. To then have the infant's essence, wherever it is trapped, released. It's usually in the gems. Have the infant brought up to be the same age as that person, along with the other three, grow them all to the same age, lead them all into salvation. There will be a Jane, a Doe, a Jane Doe, and three infants, six. And then you'll have the three unholy angels or demons, and the other three unholy angels or demons. And you will have, in that mass group that you pulled up, you might find the seven alternate personalities, which each one will have one of the unholy spirits of Lucifer. But it may be seven snakes that come out of the box, maybe seven spiders, maybe seven demons. These are alternate personalities. Have them turn them back into the human form, but always pray for him to reveal where the seven unholy spirits of Lucifer are known as the Baphomet. Then ask him to destroy the seals, reverse the vows, curses, dedications, and the rites that were performed, to cleanse them from these things, to command the unholy spirits of Lucifer to leave that person completely, not go to anyone you know or that they know, to destroy the Baphomet, to melt the throne, Destroy the crown, melt it down, the scepter, the rings. There will always be three rings, one for each of those three parts or those infants where they have been wed to those three unholy spirits. Have him destroy the box and everything that you found, all gems. Lead those parts to salvation and then mass integrate. Say, Lord, would you now integrate all of these parts together, making them one? whole as in the day of creation to never come apart again then sit back and drink your coffee and he'll mass integrate them then integrate the one that's left with the original person you're working with making them one sealing them with the holy spirit and applying the balm of gilead flooding them with peace so they can never come apart again then ask him to burn with holy fire that entire system. If it's the land of Snow White, burn it all up. Whatever it is, you don't need to go through it all. Just burn it all up, shrink it, ask the Lord to shrink it, and fill it with his presence and with the presence of the Holy Spirit, making it beauty from the ashes, Beulah land, having the fruit of the Holy Spirit spring up and fill that person. Ask him to take and fill it with beautiful music and hymns. Let them have the word of God always being a testimony to them. And that's it. You knock out an entire system in one to two hours easily. It can't be replaced. And when you do that, 
the one that is the God will be the one that was behind the mirror. If it won't pray with the group, then you simply ask the Lord to annihilate it, burn it completely, and remove all its memories. Now, when you've integrated the two parts together and cleansed the land, then say, Heavenly Father, would you burn up all memories, those in the computer, those in the body, every memory associated with this system and all those personalities, destroy it completely and let it, let it never be remembered. Take away all voice commands. Take away all suggestions. Remove the effect of all limericks, songs, and phrases and words. Take away all authority that has been over this person in this system. And instead, replace it with the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit. So this person can never be used again in any way by that system or anyone that owns it. Now, when you get to that throne part, and here's what I was going to tell you, but I forgot. He's going to have people associated with those unholy spirits, and it's usually the father, the mother, the grandfather, the grandmother, or their owners and handlers will come in. Whoever the people are that did the programming, they'll be there. They need to be destroyed. Have the person pray to forgive them, but have the Lord take them out of them completely and remove every aspect of them, including the root of bitterness. Then you just bring them out, ask the Lord to seal them, not let anything go in or out of them until the next time you can work together. Uh, working with very difficult, thank you, such important work with very difficult cases. Yes, the different colored jewels do mean something. Each color... And the, you're going to find ribbon programming, jewel program. Every color, like you'll see seven personalities all having different colored eyes. Every color represents one of the seven unholy spirits of Lucifer. Okay? Each one will have its own eye color. Every gem will have its own color. So you don't have to worry about those. You just take them out. And that's why it's called the rainbow. It's also called the rainbow bridge that goes from the left to the right side of the skull or right to left. Or left to right. If it's a male, it'll go from the right to the left and then back. If it's a female, it'll go from the left to the right and back. That's how they switch to the opposite side. The life essence will go from this side to that side. So this personality system is now awake. And this one's asleep. They use the tornado to cross from the black and white side of reality to the fantasy world of programming, which is all in color. They use the mining skills of the seven dwarfs to go underneath from one side to the other. They use the boat that flies in Peter Pan to fly from one side to the other. There will always be a way to cross from the left to the right side. So you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> when you break those, you break the seal, which is basically the authority of the pack and the whole unholy spirit there. Okay, before we close, any other questions? All right. Well, Lord bless you. Remember, just take it all out. Um, I What I do is I map the entire system before I start the prayer. Um, this is one example. Is I find out all the personalities, their numbers, the names, the types. I, because it's a lot to remember. And then I check off as I lead them in prayer to get rid of everything. Okay? What you're doing is cutting the head of the snake off and throwing the snake out of there. You're welcome, Randy. So, Lord bless you today. I got to get up and go to church. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And remember, be a blessing to somebody today. And be blessed. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you too. All right. In Christ's love.